Hello all, in this particular tutorial we will learn how to do the step by step setup of Microsoft Windows 2019 failover cluster using VMware Workstation Pro 17. To do this particular exercise you only need two softwares. One is Windows Server 2019 and you need VMware Workstation. Now I am using both of these softwares, I am using the evaluation version. So what I will do is like I'll take this, I'll copy this, I'll open the browser of your choice and I'll say download. And once you do that, you can see here, there's a link Windows Server 2019 Evaluation Center and ISO downloads, just double click on that and it will start downloading this evaluation version. So this is the image that I'm using, this is the ISO. It's going to take some time for it to download. I'm not going to use that because I've already downloaded it. And the second software that we need is the VMware Workstation Pro 70. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to paste it here <clears throat> and you can see you can see that we have got a link called download VMware Workstation Pro so I'm going to click on that link and then here it says download now we are going to use the Windows version because I'm recording this on a Windows so click on download now and it's going to download the VMware Workstation so again I have downloaded it so I'm not going to do that I can safely close my browser these are the only two softwares that you need to, to perform this particular exercise or perform this particular lab. The, the next part is overview. So basically our machines are divided into three machines. So we need a domain controller. This will be the first node in the cluster. This will be the second node in the cluster. So this will these two nodes will be part of the cluster and this will be the domain controller. Now, the trick that I'm doing here is like the domain controller will be also used as a file server. So I do not, I do not want to only complicate it. So if you want a separate file server, then you'll have to install another server as a file server separately. However, my domain controller will act as a file server. Now, if you are, if you have a SAN storage or NAS storage, you can definitely use uh, those storage boxes to set up the shared uh, devices, shared disk. However, in my case, I'm using, I'm using the domain controller as the file server. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to install the Windows 2019 evaluation version, the one which we downloaded. You can give host name of your choice. I'll be giving, you, you can, basically I'll not even set the host name because it's going to change. Then we are going to, we are going to set the adapter type. When we install, we are going to set the adapter type to bridged and we are going to install VMware tools and reboot the machine. So this is the first step. The next part, once we have got, this is your base machine. This is your gold image. Do not touch this. So keep this as a safety. And the reason for that is like, if while doing this exercise, if anything goes wrong, you can always clone from this machine. If you, if you touch, if you modify this particular machine and if anything goes wrong, then you'll have to, you'll have to again install the machine and that takes time. So to avoid that, what you have to do is like, you have to install Windows 2019 evaluation version and you have to keep this as a gold image or base image and you should not touch this. Using this base machine, you will create three clones. One is the domain controller, the one will be the first node and the one will be the second node. So you will have three machines, first machine, second machine and third machine. The first machine will be domain controller plus file server. The second machine will be first node and it will be, it's a part of the cluster. The second node and, and the part of the cluster. So these are the three machines that you need. The Now we are going to go to set up the domain controller. To set up the domain controller, you need to first, you need a first machine. So you, what you are going to do is like, you are going to, you are going to rename that as a Win19DC. Again, that's your choice. You can change these host names and you, you are going to set the IP address. This is the IP address that I'm using. Now, you, the reason why I'm using 192.168.1 is because my router is in this subnet or my switch is the network switch is in this, this particular subnet. Now, based on where is your router configuration, what is your router IP, you might want to change this. So sometimes the router is 192.168.0. So if it is one zero, then you change that IP to zero. So based on what is your router, you change this particular IP. So I'm using 192.168. So all of my IPs will be 192.168.1. And I can, I can show it to you. So if I go to the command prompt, and if I say IP config <coughs> find str IP v v4 find str 192.168.1 you can see 
that <coughs> I got 192.168.1.8 IP of my machine. So because of this, I'll be using I'll be using this particular IP subnet. Now you'll change the host name to this. You'll reboot it again. It's your choice. Once this is done, once the machine is rebooted, you will set up the domain controller. To set up the domain controller, you need to add a role called Active Directory Domain Services. So you'll add this particular role and you will promote the computer to a domain controller. Once that is done, you will you will reboot the machine. So you need to reboot the machine once it is promoted to the domain controller. You will uh, what you will do is like you will also log into the same machine and you will add another feature called SCSI target server and then this particular machine can be can be configured as a file server now once that is done we will create a shared disk so we'll create a quorum of 10 gb again it's your choice data of 20 gb is your choice and we will give these two ips we will give these two ips which will be a SCSI target so these two machines will be able to access this to shared drive so we'll be giving this ips now these are the ips of your these are the ips of your uh, uh you, these are the ips of your second and third machine so you can see the domain controller has got 109 the first node has got 101 so 1 1 2 2 and domain controller has got 109 so so we will be giving the first node 1 ip and node 2 ip as a scuzzy target and we will also create a domain admin account called sql essay now at this moment our work on the domain controller is done so what we have done on the domain controller we set the name we installed the domain services we promoted the computer as a domain controller we installed the scuzzy target server we created a shared disk a quorum and a data disk quorum and a data disk and we mapped these two ips as the scuzzy target and we created a domain account at this moment all of your work on the domain is completed now let's move to the node 1 and node 2 so in the node 1 this whatever steps we do in node 1 and node 2 they are exactly same and now because we have cloned this machine and every machine has got a unique system identifier sid we need to generalize that particular machine you need to change that sys using the sysprep utility which is which is found under the windows system 32 sysprep under this you will find a utility called sysprep you can either use the sysprep in the GUI mode or you can run it using the command window. You can either use it in the command window or you can use it, you, you can use uh, the, the GUI mode. Now, these are the IP addresses for the node 1. So you'll change the node again, it's your choice. So I'll keep Win19 node 1. This is the IP address. And remember that when I set the IP address, I'll be setting the default gateway and I'll be setting the DNS. And that this DNS actually maps to the DC domain controller. And similarly here, everything remains the same. So you can see all the values remain the same, except the IP address, which will be 102. So what this particular step, so sysprep on both the machines, the IP addresses, change the node name, change the node name of second machine, set the IP. Now you will also add the failure cluster role. So we will add the failure cluster role. Now the next part is once the, we will, we will also add these machines to the domain. So what we need to do is like we have to go to the PC properties, change settings and add to the domain. So we'll be adding both of these nodes to the domain. And then we will be connecting using the SCSI initiator. Using the SCSI initiator, we will be connecting to the domain controller, which will give us the two disk, which will give us the two disk. Now, we this particular step on any node, we have to do it any node. So bring the disk online, initialize the disk, create the volume and give disk letter now, once that is done the final part is creating the failure cluster i'll not talk about this now i when i when we reach to that particular point i'll talk about this so i'll pause i'll i'll start with the activity now so let's let's move on so first thing is is this is the first thing install windows 2019 host name of your choice adapter type bridge adapter the, we have to install the VMware tools and reboot the machine. So let's do that. So let's go to the VMware. And you, here you can see that I am using evaluation version. So I'm using the evaluation version. This is the version. And you can also see on the home, this, this is the evaluation version, which will end in 30 days. So I have downloaded. I do not have the license. I have downloaded the evaluation version. So click on the file, click on new virtual machine, custom. You can choose typical. I'll go with custom click next this is all good click on next i will install the operating system later click on next 
Windows Server 2019, here is a drop down. You can choose which operating system you want. I am choosing Windows Server 2019. Windows, click on next, give some name. So this is our base machine. So I'm going to give Win19 base as the name of this machine. Click on next, click change this to BIOS. Click on next, processor, maybe change it to four. Click on next, memory, based on how much you have, I'll change it to 8 GB, 8192 MB, which is 8 GB. Click on next, use bridge adapter networking this is important use bridge network networking click on next this is recommended so i'm going to use that nvme based on whether you have scata id what kind of devices and i have nvme so i'm going to use nvme create new virtual disk yes how much you you can it's your choice i'll choose 80 split no i'll store it as a single file click on next and click on next and click on finish so now that this is the base machine, it won't, it will not start because there is no ISO image. So click on this edit virtual machines, go to this CD, use ISO image, use ISO image, click on browse, go to the location where you have stored your ISO image. This is the ISO image, click OK. That's done. So we have inserted the disk into the machine, power on the machine. Now, you can definitely skip this particular part if you know how to install the Windows 2019 in, in VMware workstation. And probably everybody in the IT would know that so you can skip it. But what I wanted to do is like I wanted to, I wanted to cover everything. So that is the reason why I'm doing this. So I'm going to say install now. give it a minute or two it will it will ask i'm choosing windows server 2019 data center evaluation click on next i accept the license click on custom install windows click on next and now the installation will start the installation of os will take time based on how much ram memory and how much powerful your machine is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and come back once the installation of this machine is completed. So it's prompting me for the restart. Windows needs to restart to continue. So installation looks good. So I'm going to say restart now. The machine is getting restarted. And we are almost there. It went for the reboot second time. So it was basically it was trying to install some of the softwares. And here give a complicated password. That's done. Click on finish. Log into the machine. password looks incorrect give the correct password that's done i'm logging into this particular machine for the first time click on yes now what we are going to do is this one we can ignore so what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to set we are going to set some of the okay we are not going to do anything so what we are going to do now is we are going to install the vmware tools the second part is install VMware tools and reboot. So I'm going to install that. So here you can see the I've inserted. So from here, I said install VMware tools and here it appeared. So select choose what happens with this. So I'm going to say run setup. So I'm, it's going to install VMware tools for me. Click next. Typical is fine. Install. So once this is once this particular installation is done, basically it will go for the reboot so what we will what we will do is like because we will set this as a domain controller the base machine so what i'll do is like i will change this to avoid my reboot again and again so what i'll do 
is I'll say no to this and I'll change the node name of this machine because otherwise I have to keep rebooting again and again. So I'll change the node name of this machine as win19dc. Click OK. And it will again prompt me that you need to reboot. So close and now I'm going to say restart now. So I have installed the VMware guest edition VMware tools and I have also changed the host name and I'm rebooting this machine. I will not do anything more than that. So what I'll do now is I'm going to clone these machines into three different. So this is the base image. So I'm going to clone these machines into three different images. So I'm going to just log. I'm just going to log into this particular machine, shut it down. So I'm going to log into this particular machine. This is the base image. I'm going to, again, I gave the wrong password. God, why it's not taking for whatever reason. Okay. Um, okay. So what did, what exactly happened? So let me try one more time. Okay. So I was, looks like I was entering the wrong password. So anyway, so do not show this. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just shut it down. So I, I have installed the VMware tools I'm, and I have changed the host name and you can verify. So you can see this PC properties and this is win 19 DC. So I'm going to shut down this particular machine. So maybe plant shut down. So I'm going to shut this particular machine. Once I've shut down this particular machine, the next part is to clone this, make three clones of this Win19 DC, Win19 Node 1, Win19 Node 2. This is the domain controller plus file server. This is your Node 1. This is your Node 2 in the nodes of the cluster. So, so now let's close this. What we are going to do is we are going to right click on this, click on manage, click on clone, say next, the current state, this is fine. Create a full clone, click on next, give it the name, whatever no name you want. So I'll say win19dc. So this will be domain controller. So I'm giving the name win19dc. Click on finish. It's going to create a clone of the base machine. And this will this we will use as a domain controller. So here you can see a domain controller appear. Now I'm going to go back again and I'm going to clone. I'm going to clone the base machine once again so manage clone this time i'll give the name as win19 node 1 so i'll copy this current state full clone next win19 node 1 click on finish so this is going to create another machine for me and that's close now the next part is the third machine. So again, manage clone next current state full clone next. And I'm going to say node two. So now I got three machines. Once this is done, once this is done, I'm going to remove this base machine. So because I don't want to do anything mistakenly, so I'm going to remove it. It's not going to delete the machine. It's go just going to remove it from my library. So I'm going to remove it. So now I got three machines. Win 19 DC, node one, node two. Our first work is on the node domain controller because we need to set some things. So now we have created three clones. Now the first thing is set up the domain controller and file server. This particular machine will be domain controller plus file server. So power on this particular machine. Right, so VM send control all delete log into that particular machine. And now what we are going to do is we are going to let's check the host name. The host name should be Win90DC. So looks good. Now we will set the IP address of this particular machine. So this is the IP address that we are going to set. So I'm going to go here and click on this adapter, open network and internet settings. Change adapter options, click on properties, 
uncheck IPv6, click on IPv4, click on properties, enter the IP address. Sometimes the copy paste don't work. So let's see. Yeah, that worked. That worked. And here I'm going to say, okay, so that's done. That's done. Disable and enable it. Right. So we got now let's verify two things, the host name and the host name. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that everybody can see it clearly. So you can see host name and IP config should say 192.168.1.109. So that looks good. The next part is installing, installing the, the domain controller. So for that launch server manager, add roles and features, wait for this to finish, add roles and features, click on click on next role based feature installation click on next choose the current machine click on next active directory domain services so we are going to choose active directory domain services add features click on next click on next click on next if needs it restarted let it restart so and click on install so this one this installation is going to take some time. So I'm going to pause and come back once installation is done. So installation is completed. You can see installation succeeded. I'm going to close this and here you can see a triangle notification. So I'm going to click on this notification and it says promote this server to domain controller. So we have added a domain services feature. Now we need to promote this server to a domain controller. So this is the next step. So promote the computer to a domain controller. So we are going to do that. So add a new forest. So I'm going to minimize this and I'll keep it in the middle. So add a new forest, give the name of your whatever name you want to give. So I'm going to give db.com. This will be the domain name. So click on next. And here we have to give the directory services restore mode password, give some complicated password. You That's done. Click on next. We, we don't have to do that. The net bias domain name is going to automatically choose the DB. So it's going to automatically choose this net bias do domain name. I don't have to type it. Give it a minute. So you can see that's done. Click on next. And then it's these are the default paths. I'm okay with this. And this is the summary. If everything looks good, then click on next. It's going to do the prerequisite checks. So it's going to do the prerequisite checks. It's going to take few seconds, not few minutes. It's going to do all of the checks. And if everything looks good and all prerequisite checks pass successfully, and then we are going to click on install. The installation is going to take some time. This is going to take some time. So I'm going to pause it and come back once it is finished. So we are almost there, not at finished. We are almost there Configuring configuring the DNS services server services on this computer. So it's not at finish, but you can see the server was successfully configured. And then I don't have to do anything. It's automatically going for a reboot. I don't have to do anything. So I'm not, you can see on the screen, my mouse is, I'm not moving my mouse. So it's going to automatically reboot this particular machine. So the right now it's going to promote this computer. So it, we have installed it. We have promoted it as a domain controller. It's going to reconfigure some settings. The domain controller is a powerful machine. So it needs time to reboot and all that stuff. So this particular step is going to take five to 10 minutes based on how powerful your base machine is. I'm going to pause the video and wait for it to completely come online. So it's still doing this. I, I do not know at what point I stopped it, but probably at 23.55 right now is 0, 0, 0, 0. So basically 12 midnight. And I believe it has been doing this for close to five minutes. However, if I'm not wrong, then within few seconds or probably another minute. And I just don't wanted to show you that this particular step takes a long time. So if if once you install the domain controller the and you promote 
the domain services and you, when you promote it as a domain controller and when you do the first reboot if it takes time then probably probably if you have patience do not reboot the machine because it is configuring itself in the background so have patience and and even I'm, i was hoping that it should finish so i do not know whether it's going to take one more minute so let's give it a minute so yeah it has taken more than that minute so i was expecting that to finish and that's why i unpaused this particular video thinking that by within five minutes it will be done but it it definitely has taken more than five minutes more than six minutes actually so give it, give give another yeah that's done so maybe it has taken six plus minutes so that's done and the timing is off here i think i think this is us timing so that's fine i'm not going to play around that if you want to change the time zone definitely you can change the time zone etc etc i'm not going to change that so that's that's fine so now <laughs> then what what we are going to do now is we are we are going to log into this particular machine and we need to install one more role now we are we are machine is configured as a and you can see that is a db slash admin which means a domain slash administrator so i'm going to log into the to, to the domain so now this particular machine is part of the domain so you can click on this and click on the properties and you can see the name full name of this is win19dc.db.com which means that this particular machine is part of the cluster now what what we are going to do is what we are going to do now is we have to so this part is done so we are now going to install the SCSI target server so this is the second part so before doing that let me actually check and i'm going to show it to you so that if if the SCSI SCSI is running so then you that should be a port called five five uh, three two six zero that should be running so i'm going to say give me the ports which are listening so these are the all the ports which are listening i'm going to clear this i'm not bothered about all the ports i'm bothered about a port called three two six zero so i'm going to just say three two six and you can see three two six eight and three two six nine is listening there is no port called 3260 which is listening now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the server manager once again add wait for it to finish so that's done add roles and feature click next click next click next and here under the file storage i'm going to say iSCSI target server i'm going to say iSCSI target server i'm going to click on next click on next if it needs restart, I'll say restart. Yes. Click on install and let's see if it needs a restart. And basically right now I'm installing the SCSI target. So basically to convert this particular machine into, into the file server. Right now it is, it is just a domain controller. So I'm going to create some shared disk on this or to do that. So installation succeeded. Close this. And now let me run this particular command and you can see we have got an IP called 32, sorry, we have got a port called 3260, which is listening. This particular port will allow this particular machine to be connected using the SCSI protocol. Now that's done. So now we'll go to the file and storage. So server manager again, file and storage services, SCSI protocol to create a SCSI virtual disk. So we'll give this. And here, if you have another drive, you can configure it in another drive or in a different path. I don't have another drive. So click on next, give a name. So maybe quorum disk. So I'm going to give this quorum disk, click next 10 GB. So give the size you can choose one GB or based on your new SCSI target, click on next. And let's say a cluster, click next, add, these are the targets. So this IP address, so the IP address of the first, <coughs> IP address of the first machine, so that will be 192.168.1.101, the node one. Click OK, add another target, which is the second IP address, 102, that's done. So these two, I, these two machines will be able to access this particular drives. Click on next, click on next and create. So if everything looks good, we'll say create. So now, now the first one is done. So now we'll, we'll, create one more. So right click on this, create new SCSI drive, click on next. The second one will be data. The first one was quorum. Second one is data. So give some size. So let's say 20 GB for the data. Again, is your choice. Click on next. Same. I'm going to choose the same target. So same target, both the disk will be. 
and I'm going to create this. So now I got two SCSI targets. One is quorum, which is of 10 GB. One is data, which is of 20 GB. All good. Now the final step is create one domain account, SQL SA. So what we are going to do is I'm going to create a domain account <coughs> and that will be domain admin. So I'm going to go to Active Directory, Users and Computers. And under this, I'm going to click expand this db.com users and right click on this and I'll say new user and I'll say SQL essay. You can choose whatever you want. So I'm going to create this and click on next. If you if you want to change the password at not next login and all this stuff, you can do that. But I'm going to say user cannot change the password. Password never expires. It's your choice based on your security standards, you will go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create this domain account and that's done. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on that domain account, click on the properties, click on the member of, and I'm going to make this user as the domain admin. So I'm going to make this user as a domain admin. So click on OK, click on apply, click on OK. So now you can see that this user is domain admin. All good. So at this moment, our work on domain controller is done our domain controller is set up the file we create a shared disk we set up a domain user all of our work on the domain controller is done so we can safely log out from this particular machine now let's go to the first machine it's, it is still turned off and now the steps that we are going to do on node 1 and node 2 are exactly same so i'm going to to save your time and save my time i'm going to power on both of the machines at the same time and i'm going to do the steps parallelly instead of doing one at a time i'm going to do that parallelly so i'm powering on both the machines so that the node one is powered on node two is powered on so now what i'm going to do i'm going to log in to both of the machines so i've logged into the first machine let me log into the second machine second node our work on domain controller is done so i'm not going to do anything on the domain controller everything now on node 1 and node 2 if we have issues then probably we'll go to the domain controller so first thing is we need to we need to so what are we need to change the ip address so no before changing the ip address we need to do the sysprep because this is the clone so we need to do the sysprep so for in in one of the machine i'll one of the machine i'll actually go to this location and under this location you will find a, and i'll do it via gui so let me minimize this open explorer go to this location here under this windows system 32 sysprep you can find a sysprep run as administrator oobe out of box experience generalize a reboot click on ok so it's going to do that in the next machine i'm going to use this command prompt so instead of exactly same so generalize oob so these options are mentioned in the command so you can see here so if you see this then you can see sysprep generalize oob reboot so instead of doing it manually we can do this so on the second node i'm going to do that using using the command prompt so launch command prompt in uh, launch command prompt as administrator and run this particular command so this in the second node i'm doing the sysprep however using the gui uh, uh, using the command prompt in the first one i'm doing and after that it's it's it, there is an option to reboot so automatically the node one is rebooted and once this is done the node two will also get reboot it will reboot will happen automatically so wait for it so it's getting ready so I'm, i'll pause and come back once the reboot is done i think it it, it has already been done so i don't have to pause it no it, it's still it, it's still going through maybe multiple reboots yeah so now i'll change the country so it's again because we changed it so i'm going to i'm in india so i'm going to say india click on next and accept the license give the strong password it will not take a simple password you need to give a strong password so give a strong password click on finish and here as well so it's getting rebooted so wait for it you need to have a lot of patience because the it is windows windows needs multiple reboots so you every action that you need most of the action needs multiple reboots so 
you need to have a patience for the machines to be rebooted multiple times while this particular setup is happening. So now I, I'm setting up the node two. So now I'm going to log into the first node. The what we have done till now is we have just done the sysprep on the first node and sysprep on the second node. That's all we have done as of now. So the second machine is also ready for us to log in. So let's log into the second machine as well. So that's done. Now click on yes. Click on yes. Now what we are going to do is we are going to set the next part is setting the IP and changing the node name. So I'm going to take this particular IP address. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to minimize this. And I'm going to go to node one, change open network settings, change adapter options, click on properties, IPv6, uncheck it, IPv4, click on properties, use the following IP address, 192.168, 192.168. And here, this should be actually the IP of the domain controller. So I'm going to change the last letter to nine because that's the domain controller and the default gateway i'm going to say 192.168.1.1 and if you wonder what is 1.1 it's the ip of my router this is the ip of my router so this is the default gateway so now i got the ip address i got the subnet mask i got the default gateway this is the domain controller ip click on ok click on close and disable it enable it that's done now i have to do the same thing on the second node as well so let's do the same thing minimize this open network internet and network settings change adapter options right click on it click on the properties ipv6 uncheck it ipv4 click on properties use following address and here i have to change it to two because this is the second node the default gateway will remain the same everything else will remain the same and the dns server is the ip of your domain controller so that's all good so that's done disable it enable it the next part is we are going to we are going to we are going to change the host name so i'm going to click on properties and i'm going to advanced system settings and computer name change and i'm going to change this to the node one so the first node will have the the name as node one so i'm going to click ok and it's actually going it's it will ask for the reboot so after changing the node we need to reboot so i'm going to say restart now and i'm going to go here i'm going to close this and i'm going to right click on it click on this pc properties change settings change and i'm going to give this as a node 2 so i'm going to give this particular machines node 1 and node 2 no work on domain controller domain controller work is done so i'm going to restart this particular machine the once the machines are restarted now we need to install failover clustering role so we need to install failover clustering role so let's do that or before doing that actually failover clustering role we need to actually do another thing so we need to so i'm going to do two things at the same time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to join this machine to the cluster and also I'm going to add a role. So first thing is we need to join this particular machine. So add a failure cluster role. So yeah, we can do the failure cluster role. And then we can also join this machine machine to the domain. Both of these action will need a reboot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do both at the same time to save my time. So add roles and feature. Click on next, click on next, click on next, click on next. And here you will find failure clustering, add feature, click on next. I'll not say restart this time because I will do the manual restart. So I'm going to say install the same thing. I'm going to do the on node two. So click, go to the second node. And I'm going to go to the server is, is going to launch server manager for me. Let's wait for it to complete the data collection. That's done. Add roles and features. Click on next. Click on next. Click on next. Click on next. Failure clustering. Add features. Click on next. I'm not going to restart it. Install. Now I'm going to go back to the node one. This particular needs a restart. So a restart is pending. However, I'm not going to restart it. I'm going to close this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on the machine. 
this PC, right click on the properties, change settings and change. And here I'm going to join this to domain, which is the db.com. This is the domain name. I'm going to change this to, I'm going to connect this machine to the db.com. It asks me the password of the domain controller. So I'm going to give the password of domain admin. That's if, if welcome to db.com. So that's good. Looks like, and now it's, it's, it will ask us to restore, restart, and I'm going to say restart now. And I'm going to go to the second node. Restart is pending. I'm not going to do the restart. I'm going to join this particular machine to the domain and I'm going to restart this particular machine. So this will save at least one restart. I do not know how many restarts we need to do, but at least this will save us one restart. So I'm going to now go to the change domain db.com. Okay ask for the domain admin password, give the domain admin password and click on OK. If everything looks good, welcome to db.com domain, click OK, click close and restart now. So now I'm, I'm restarted both the machines. Now we have what we have done. Let's revise what we have done. So we change the IP address, we set the domain name of the machine. We set change the IP address. We did it on both the machine. We rebooted the machine. Then we added the failure clustering. We did not reboot the machine. We joined the machines to the db.com domain. So we joined the machine. Now, now what we need to do is we need to connect to the shared disks. The two disks that we got, we need to connect to that. And those disks are on the domain controller and this is the IP of the domain controller. So I'm going to take that particular IP. So I'm going to put it here. Yeah, it's here. So let, now I'm going to log into the both of the machine. So let's go to the first machine. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to un eject this particular operating system disk. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the disk management. I could open it from here. So computer management, minimize this and bring it in between. And you can see under the disk management, I only have, I only have one disk, which is C drive. I do not. And this is the DVD drive. This is the ISO image. So this is the the disk that I have, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the server manager, click on tools, click on SCSI initiator. Yes, start it automatically. And then it will, it will open a SCSI initiator. This one, I'm going to put the IP address of, I'm going to put the IP address of my domain controllers. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to say quick connect and it got connected. Login is successful. Done done okay and now i'm going to go to the disk management and you can see a 10 gb disk and a 20 gb disk and from where this disk appeared these are the disk which we configured a quorum disk of 10 gb and a data disk of 20 gb these are the shared disks now what we need to do is we need to bring the disk online initialize the disk create the volume give the disk letter now let's do that so first thing is bring it online both of the disk i brought it online now next part is once they have been brought online, I'm going to click on initialize this, choose GPT. So I'm going to choose both of the disks and I'm going to say initialize those disks, click on OK. So both of these are now online and both of the disks are initiated as a GPT disk. Now I'm going to create a new simple volume. So 10 GB disk, I'm going to give, going to give letter as Q as a quorum. So I'm going to give the name as quorum. Again, it's your choice, whatever name you want to give. That's your choice based. So that's done and I'm going to create a new simple volume and this one will be E that is okay. And I'm going to give this as a data disk. So that's done. Click on finish. So now I got two disks Q and E. These are the SCSI disks. We need to do the same thing on the second node now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the second node, log into the second node. And what I'm going to do now here is I'm going to connect to the SCSI drive. So click on tools and SCSI initiator. Yes, start it, minimize this and give the IP address of the domain controller all of your file server. So this one, sometimes the copy paste for whatever reason, the copy paste don't work. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't work. So sometimes it works, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work. It's a bit flaky. So that's done. And before doing that, again, here you will find under the disk management. So if you do disk management, 
you will see that we do not have the Q and E drive. We have only this. We have only this DVD drive. So we do not have those two disks. So now I'm going to say quick connect. And at the back end, you will see those two disks connecting. So that's done. So you got your two disks. Now I'm not going to bring them online because those disks are online on one node. So I'm not going to do that here. So now we have connected to the shared disk. Now it's we are at the step where we are going to create a failure cluster. So everything is done. So now all of our prerequisites are done. So now we are going to create a failure cluster. Now to do the, <laughs> to create a failure cluster, you need to open the failure cluster manager and you first you need to validate the configuration. You can skip this, but not a good practice. Add both nodes to the validation and run the validation. And once the validation is done, you can create the cluster. You can open again failure cluster manager and you can add both nodes, provide cluster name, provide the cluster IP and you can create the cluster. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to no, I'm not going to do it twice. So I'm going once the validation is done, I'm going to create the cluster and I'll show you how. So let, now we need to open the failure cluster. So and we have to create the cluster from any node. You don't have to do this on both the machines. You have to do it on any one of the node. So I'm going to go to the node one. I'm going to minimize this. Go to the server manager, go to the tools, go to the failure cluster manager. And I'm going to say, do not show me this and click there. And what we are going to do here, you first thing is you can either choose to create a cluster or you can choose the validate configuration. It is always better to validate the configuration because validate configuration will give you any errors. So validate the configuration. So I'm chose the validate configuration and then click on next and let's see. If, yeah, so enter the name. So this is the name of your first node. So enter the node names of both the machines. So I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose that at that particular machine. So this is the machine. It automatically identified what is that machine and you it identify the second machine. Click on next and run <coughs> all tests. This is recommended. So run all tests. So it's going to run. So basically, if, if I don't say run inventory, network, storage, uh, we don't have storage space direct system configuration. These are the tests that it's going to run and we can choose what test it has to run. So instead of that, I'm going to say run all tests, click on next, click on next. And if you see here in the background, the tests are currently running. Test is currently running. Now, the thing is, these are a lot of, there are a lot of the tests and that will take time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video and come back once these tests are completed. So looks like we are almost there. So it's now running the network configuration. So almost that not at finished. I just wanted to show you that it does take time. So this test because it's going to validate a lot of things. So it's going to and we might see some warnings in IP configuration. I'll explain you why. And basically the reason is we when you set up the cluster, you need to make sure that you set up multiple networks, one for the heartbeat, one for the public, one for the private. However, we the way we have built the cluster, we have only used the one network configuration. And that is why it, it shows us the tests have been passed, but there are some warnings. So what we can do is like we can view report. It's going to it's going to ask me later, it's going to open up the this particular report in a browser. And you can see we have issues on the network. So I'm going to click on this network and let's see what warnings we have got. So scroll down and figure out it actually should directly take me there, but for some reason it is not taking me there. So I'm going to scroll down and find out where are those warnings. So I'm going down, going down, going down. And those warnings will be either in the red or yellow based on the severity. So let's go down, keep going down and somewhere here. And you can see he says here node is reachable by only one pair of network interface. So basically because we have only one network interface, it is a single point of failure which is not a good practice. So you need to have multiple network interfaces. However, this will not cause any issue. We can still create our cluster. This is a warning. This is not a error. So I'm going to ignore this. And now instead of restarting again, you, you can close this and you can you can close this and you can again open create a cluster. So instead of doing that, I'm going to say create the cluster now using the validated node. So I don't have to do I don't have to again add those. So I'm going to the cluster is going to create on node one and node two. So I'm going to click on finish and click on next. And here I need to give the name of the cluster. Before doing that, I'm going to show you something. So if I open command prompt, let me make this screen a little bit bigger. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ping and ping for some reason is not taking W ping win 19 C. So I'm going to give that name. Okay, just give me a minute, guys. Okay, so win 19 C. So ping this and you can see it's not pinging. So it cannot find this particular host. Keep a note of this. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give the name of the cluster win19c and I'm going to give the IP of the cluster and I'm going to choose 110. This is the IP of the cluster and click on next. And this is the summary, add all eligible storage to the cluster. So whatever disk we created, those disks will be added all of that will be configured. So click on next and now it's creating the cluster for us, forming the cluster. So wait for a few seconds. Keep a note on this and let's see if it started pinging. So it should, it should automatically register itself with the IP, with the IP. So that's done. So now I'm going to do one more time and you can see the, the ping which was failing is now giving us and this is the IP of your this is the IP of your cluster. So Win19C is the IP of your cluster. Now we are done. This tutorial is done, but however, I just want to show you. So now if I click on finish and go to the rows, there are no rows because we just created the cluster. But if you see the nodes, we got two nodes, Win19 node one, Win19 node two. So these are the two nodes in the cluster. Both the nodes are up. If I go to the storage, if you go to the disk, you can see we have one disk, which is the quorum disk 10 GB. We have got the second disk, which is the 20 GB. And now it shows here cluster disk one, cluster disk two. What you can do is like you can change the name of this. So this is the quorum disk. So you can change the name, apply, click OK. So we have changed the name and I'm going to do the similar for the second disk, which is the data disk. Again, these are your choices. You can change whatever you want. So now we got two disks here. The one is the data disk of 20 GB. One is the quorum disk. Both of the disks are now connected and our cluster is completely done. So what we saw here is basically how to set up the in this particular tutorial, we saw how to do the step by step setup of Windows Server 2019 failover cluster using VMware Workstation Pro 17. Again, we need only two softwares. The two software is Windows Server 2019 evaluation version. VMware Workstation Pro 17. Both of these are evaluation version. I have downloaded them from the internet and I have installed them on my machine. And those are the only two softwares that have been used to create this particular cluster. We do not need anything else. I hope this particular tutorial was useful. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye bye.